So you just received from the FAA Part 135 certification. This is a process that air carriers and operators must go through, and it's the standard by which regulators are now uh, approving drone deliveries. Tell us a little bit about this and specifically the drone airline that you are now going to build out. Yes, we are very excited about being the first. At the last earnings call, I talked about it, and I said that was a goal, and we have worked very closely with the Department of Transportation and the FAA. We did want to make sure that, uh, that we got the first certification for competitive reasons, but because we are a large airline, we know how the FAA and the DOT works and the importance of safety. And so to, to actually be the first to get it is great. But, you know, we've had a lot of firsts here. We had the first U.S. delivery of a revenue flight with WakeMed. We have now made a 1,000 of those flights. That's worked out well. Now we're the first to get the full uh, 135 uh, certification, which allows us to have a full drone airline that we will be making multiple lo uh, deliveries, multiple locations. So very excited. Good day for UPS. Now, UPS, uh, and you just mentioned it, you've run pilots. You've also been doing these revenue-generating deliveries within healthcare. As you build out uh, this network here, are you going to continue to focus on healthcare? Are you going to expand to other things like perhaps, finally, the thing we've been talking about and anticipating for years, widespread package deliveries? Yes, healthcare is... Uh, a strategic initiative for us, so that's the first uh, initial uh, initiative. And uh, it will be in numerous uh, campus-like environments. You know, I could see 20, I could see more, and to where it's just dozens and dozens. But then there are other opportunities across other industries that absolutely have campus-type environments. And when the regulations are complete, we certainly believe that there are residential opportunities and other delivery opportunities that will help supplement the uh, incredible group of drivers we have all over the world. And of course, this means more infrastructure. What do you need to build out and how much will it cost? You know, we're really excited about the infrastructure build. Uh, we're not ready to say how much it will cost at this point in time, but let me just tell you a little bit about what we're doing. So we're developing a ground-based uh, fleet of drones that have detect and avoid technologies. That's going to be very uh, important uh, from a safety standpoint. And then a consolidation, consolidated control center that will allow us to uh, dispatch and operate these drones from a consolidated area. So that's technologies that we're working with uh, several companies to collaborate to develop. And then with this Part 135 certification, you know, we're using drones for lightweight deliveries now, but we can go up to over 55 pounds. We can fly at night. So that will mean different type drones, and we're working with several leading companies to be able to develop that technology. So. Lots of good opportunities for UPS and UPS customers. Hey, David, it's Carl. Um, you know, it's today the San Francisco Fed has a paper titled, Are Workers Losing to Robots? And they point out the share of national income that's gone to workers has dropped from the low 60s to the 50s in about 20 years. It's not outsourcing, they argue. It's not uh, offshoring. It's automation. Long term, what's the effect on employment here? Well, when you look at, uh, at drones uh, specifically, I can tell you we think it will be an enabler of, of jobs, especially at the beginning, because when you can offer specialized services such as drone delivery, you also have a better chance of getting your customers the rest of their deliveries. So if we're growing our business, then we will create opportunities for our drivers at the same time. We have 125,000 drivers. If this is a thriving company that is focused on leading the way with technologies, we believe we can create opportunities for them, plus provide opportunities for our customers through the latest technologies. David, tell us more about the economics of drone deliveries. It seems to me like this is a premium service 
somebody who wants something really quickly uh, and, and something that's, I guess, uh, relatively lightweight, though you say it goes up to 55 pounds. Do, do you expect this to cost quite a bit more for the customer and significantly more to actually deliver? You know, it's hard to say exactly uh, uh, just a general cost because it is going to be customer specific for their needs. And I can tell you, at first, it will be more specialized services. But the advantage of this Part 135 is we're going to be able to consolidate and have scale and be able to dispatch from one central office. That means there's going to be efficiencies which we will be able to pass on to our customers. So the more scale we develop, the more economical it will be. And so we believe that it's a viable business, that our customers are going to win, and it will be economically viable for us too. David, I want to shift gears. We've got another weak ISM manufacturing number today, activity contracting to the weakest level since 2009. Whether it's here or in the, in the U.S. Or, or whether it's abroad, what is your take on the economy right now? In the U.S., I'll start. Uh, it's still consumer-driven, and uh, we are seeing that it's holding up. It may not be as strong an increase as last year, but we still feel pretty good about what we're seeing. Of course, we'd like to see industrial production and manufacturing increase. But the consumer is holding uh, on right now, and we're glad to see that. From an uh, international point of view, there are headwinds, no doubt about it. Growing concern about Brexit and what's going to happen October 31st. And then, of course, yes, China trade negotiations. There's concerns there, too. So, But uh, when you have a flexible network like we do, we're going to monitor these macroeconomic conditions and then we have to respond, we have to reduce costs, we have to change our network, we have to move trade flows. So it's a lot of work to do, but we think it's manageable and uh, we keep our eye on it, that's for sure. And of course, today's the start of the fourth quarter as well, which means that peak season is really kind of just right around the corner. Can you give us a forecast of what you're expecting this holiday season? I can, and, uh, and peak is really basically here right now for us is we're starting to hire and train people and uh, finalize our plans. We do expect a heavy uh, peak driven by, by the consumer, driven by e-commerce. It's going to be an even bigger part of our business this year. That's why we've added a uh, 100,000 employees, or we will, for this peak season and we've added an additional 400,000 packages an hour of capacity, 5 million square feet. We think that we will have another successful peak as we did last year. But peaks are always challenging. There's no doubt about it. 